All right, so here's my little man pack that I have set up for the ASU FTM 300 with the armor lock roll cage and all of that. Fits in this little Maxpedition sling pack just fine. And on that sling pack, there's this little pouch on the top. And check this out. Right here is the ever so cool Farad J uh, J pole two meter antenna made by the ham radio rookie. Uh, this thing is pretty badass and cool. If you're not familiar with the ham radio rookie, he's got a fairly new channel. Guy who is definitely a maker and a inventor and a creator. And he's been experimenting with different antennas uh, outside of the box like this. Uh, this thing is just so cool. So you see, it is a J-pole that's made of Faraday cloth that's been sold on to a big nylon strap. Light, a lightweight one, uh, but uh, will hold up nicely. He's even designed and 3D printed uh, mounting brackets for it on both ends. And he's come up with this very clever uh, BNC connector. Looks like a printed circuit board on this thing. Now, I think it was the ham radio dude that introduced me to his channel a little while ago. And I thought the stuff he was doing was pretty cool. And he was showing some of these prototypes of this antenna and I thought, man, that thing is so cool. I gotta get me one of these. Then, just a little while ago, he was a guest on the clubhouse and he announced that these things are for sale. So, I ordered one that, that uh, very next day. Also that very next day, Ham Radio Tube, Mike Kate MRD, did a video showing his. And I thought, wow, I probably should get two of these. So, I waited until this thing came in just to make sure it's going to hold up and I haven't used it yet but boy howdy if it works half as good as this thing is constructed I'm definitely going to be ordering at least another one maybe two. Uh, one will make permanent residence in this man pack because it'll be just what the doctor ordered for that and then I'll probably throw one in my uh, QRP kits for the 705 and the 818. So. Enough blabbing, let's get this thing up in the air and see what it does. All right, so according to a repeater book, the Isanti repeater is 25.9 miles away. So 26 miles, we'll say. To round it up to sound cool. And let's see if we can hit it with just the uh, signal stuff, signal stick. KD9 and JJ. No go. So, and this is why I love having the BNC adapters on my handhelds. Just like that, we go to the Farad J. Let's give that a go. KD9 and JJ. And we got the repeater. KD9 and JJ portable. Anybody on a repeater that can uh, give me a signal check? Why is the blue light on? Huh. Some weirdness is afoot. Let's switch it over to the FDM 300. Uh, see if that does anything. KD9 and JJ, portable. 
Is anyone on the Isantia repeater that could give me a signal check? Let's see how this works. All right, old man noises. Okay, it's a different day, slightly a different setup. Same location, same antenna, same flannel. Uh, let's see if I can hit that same repeater I was trying last time. Now, last time I tried using my FT3D, uh, just the signal stick, nothing happened. Tried it with the Ferry J, and I was able to get into the repeater, no problem. Nobody was there to give me a signal report, so I don't know if I was just barely making it or full quieting or most likely somewhere in between. So let's repeat it with a different radio. This is the FT4X. Same wattage, but the reason why I'm trying that one is because this one seems a little funky. There's a blue light that's on that's normally not, but that's neither here nor there. All right, let's go up the signal stick. KD9 NJJ portable. Nothing. Ditch the B and C connected signal stick. Add the B and C connected Faraday or a Fair J. We'll get it right sooner or later, maybe. KD9 NJJ portable. KD9 NJJ radio test. Doesn't seem to be working. I'm wondering if this, you know, I am using the carbon fiber, uh, carbon six pole. That does cause interference. Uh, it's not a big deal with HF, but VHF, it's a little more of a deal, so. Let's try repositioning this so that the antenna I'm trying to reach is, or the repeater I'm trying to reach is that way. So maybe the carbon fiber's blocking it. Switch it around. I don't expect any different results, but you don't know until you know. KD9 NJJ radio test. That's a DK Shane, you're coming across kind of scratchy, but that might be me. Hey Sean, good to hear from you. No, it's probably me. I'm out backpacking along the St. Croix River. I'm trying a brand new portable uh antenna so I, I just got a handheld at five watts and i'm uh about a mile from highway 70 so it's all on me both of us and i'm down in blaine heading away away from the repeater so i'm i'm probably approaching the edge of uh of my connectability too but uh, you're making the repeater fine so uh yeah sounds like a fun project for today yeah Okay, we can both be the weak link. As long as the link stays together, right? Yeah, this is, I'm, I'm pretty impressed that uh, that uh, you're on the edge of the repeater and I'm on the edge of a uh, handheld and we're talking to each other. So uh, thanks for coming back to me, Sean. Hope you're having a great day. Later, uh, here's the okay, clear. All right, KD9 NJJ, I'll be clear as well. Although I should try the other. Yeah. All right, folks. So you F around, you find out. Uh, <laughs> there is a lot of truth to carbon fiber interfering with antennas, apparently. Uh, like this, I was able to get into the repeater just fine, but with Everything snags when I don't want it to snag. Let's try that again with everything in a more manageable size. 
when I basically had the antenna set up like this with the carbon fiber mass leaning into that sapling out like this, the carbon fiber was in line of sight between me and the repeater, uh, basically, maybe not quite, but when I turn it around, it worked just fine. If you if you rewind and watch when I when I keyed up and called out to the repeater, I didn't get any response. I switched it around and it worked just fine. So I guess if I wanted to be real scientific, I would have tried moving stuff around to repeat that failure, but I'm just gonna say that's close enough. This is not science. This is amateur radio. Of course, I forgot to record it. I just tried the FT3D and it works just fine. But I got this throwback uh, Kmart blue light special thing going on here. The light blue light does not turn off, but I guess that's just the way it goes. All right, folks, let's wrap up this video. But first, let's make sure I got audio because, yeah, there we go. Uh, Here's the Farrah J antenna. I did a little mod to it where I just add your standard S clip to that. So I always have a little clip to put onto the Velcro binder to hold it all together. And I've been using with the testing that I did a six foot length of RJ316. And I can already hear the keyboards typing right now that that's a high loss coax and you are right. So I'm fine with that little bit of loss for what I gain in size and weight. RJ316 is very compact, lightweight. I use it a lot. In fact, that's about all I use for parks on the air, summits on the air. Granted, with HF, the loss is more manageable than with VHF. But again, I'm not trying to reach grids way, way away or, or do anything uh, extreme. I'm just trying to reach a repeater that I can't hit with a normal handheld. And this will do that for me in most cases. Uh, I would much rather have this compact size and weight where it takes up no room at all, hardly, in a pack versus having something a little more efficient. Uh, 316 works fine for me. Now, would I run this from my home shack uh, 100 feet up to my Yagi antenna? No, <laughs> uh, but it has its purpose in a backpack, in my opinion. So let's do a little comparison before we wrap this up. Here is uh, the two meter j pull I've been using for the last few years. It is made by N9TAX. Uh, this thing is rock solid. It is tough as nails, and I like it a lot. It comes with a few different options where you can get some feed line already on it. This is RJ58. Uh, you get the choice of a BNC or a PL209 connector. Uh, and you can also get different options for the length. Highly recommend these. They work great. Uh, I can't do a roll up J pole comparison without mentioning the Ed Fung J pole. I don't own one. I've seen a lot of them on YouTube videos, and I've seen one once live in the real world, and from what I've seen, they're a fantastic option, very comparable to this, only it is uh, a lot more uh, packable. Uh, kinda got ahead of myself a little bit, but let's get back to that. Uh, this guy, as far as being compact, is not that great, and that's, the main reason I'm so excited about this guy. Uh, it takes up half the size and it's half the weight. So that's huge for me for doing backpacking and whatnot. Uh, I won't get rid of this thing. I love this. This will probably just take up permanent residence in either my truck or my Jeep. Uh, there. <laughs> this will take up permanent residence in that man pack that I have. And as I alluded to in the beginning of the video, I'm probably gonna order at least one more of these to uh, put into one of my QRP kits for either the 705 or the 818. So, I think I've rambled enough. 
I'm pretty excited. This thing works pretty well. I'm really interested to do some more uh, field experiments with it, get a better feel for it. Again, this video was not very scientific at all. There's plenty of other guys on YouTube that do a much better job of that. So hopefully they will fill that void if you're looking for more data. Because that's just not me. All right. Thanks for watching, folks. 73.